Good morning, Nims Boy Sunset. Happy to see you again. I haven't had to be that name. I cannot come. I will be done on night as it is in heaven. Just to stay a very bad. Those are trespasses as we forgive those who trespass us against us. We just not into temptation and lure us from evil. Down is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Good morning, Inspiration Kids. I'm so excited. It's our continuation of Jonah in the Whale. So whether you're sitting down, standing up, just listen wherever you are so we can hear the continuation of Jonah in the Whale. You can't run away, Jonah said God, and he sent a storm to tell him so. Whoosh went the wind. Swoosh went the waves. Help, cried the sailors as the boat tossed on the sea, but Jonah stayed fast asleep. The storm grew angrier and angrier. Help, cried the sailors, roll for the shore. But the waves were too tall. They crashed onto the deck and washed the oars out to sea. Throw the cargo, cold cargo overboard, shouted the captain, but it made no difference. The boat was sinking. Wake up, Jonah, yelled the sailors. Pray for your life. The gods are angry, shouted the captain. Someone on board has upset him. Everybody looked at each other. Who could it be? Not me, cried the cabin boy. Not me, cried the cook. Not us, cried the sailors. It must be somebody, said the captain. We'll draw lots to find out who. Wait, shouted Jonah, it's me. My God is the one true God. He sent the storm because I disobeyed him. The sailors rolled their eyes and shook their heads. Now what do we do? They howled. We're all going to drown. God isn't angry with you, said Jonah. If you throw me overboard, the storm will stop. We can't do that. They cried, you'll drown. But Jonah was brave. Do as I say, he said. So the sailors tossed Jonah into the stormy sea and the storm stopped at once. Jonah slowly sank to the very bottom of the sea, but God didn't want Jonah to drown. Oh no, he still had a plan for Jonah. I'm gonna stop there. We're gonna have to find out the plan next week for Jonah. I also have a small prayer for you all. It's from Psalms 147.4. God counts the stars and names each one. I see the moon. I see the moon and the moon sees me. God blesses the moon and God blesses me. God counts the stars, one, two, three. God made the stars and God made me. Goodbye, Inspiration Kids. Have a good week, learn a lot. I know a lot of you, it's your last week of school, but continue to stay active during the summer. See you next week. Good morning, Inspiration Church. Good morning, my VIP youth, and good morning, my I Grow kids. It is yet another Sunday, and I am so excited to be before you on another virtual sermon Sunday. Hey, this month we have been acknowledging Women History Month, or Women's Month, excuse me. And in doing so, uh, and in proper taste, uh, I would like to open up with an inspiring video from a young lady. Um, I watched this video on uh, television the other day and I couldn't help but be inspired by her story. Um, I hope you enjoy this story. Check it out. just as a world-class fencer, but also as a world-class doctor. When she's not sparring, she's working towards a degree in medicine. But as the Olympics grows near, Thompson has put down the books to focus on her dream of Olympic gold. 
Here's Craig Melvin with the story. At 28 years old, Kamali Thompson is making her mark in the field of fencing and studying to be an orthopedic surgeon. So you were fencing and in med school simultaneously. Yes. So I started fencing internationally in medical school, which is nuts. Which do you enjoy more, fencing or, or medicine? Oh, it's not the same. They both light up a different kind of fire for me, you know? Thompson grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey. As a child, she was passionate about dance until one day a chance encounter changed her life. I was walking with my mom to um, the dance room and we passed in the cafeteria that had a fencing demonstration going on. So my high school coach convinced my mom that fencing would be a really great way to get a college scholarship. And that was it. That was it? That was it. Way to go, Mom. Yeah. Thompson signed up for fencing classes a few months later, and in 2008, she was recruited to fence for Temple University. So we fenced in college, and that wasn't enough. You decided at some point, oh, I'd like to be a doctor. Yeah, so I had always wanted to be a doctor since I was like three or four-ish years old. After graduating with honors in 2012, Thompson went on to Rutgers Medical School. Never gave up fencing competitively, becoming a U.S. national champion. Her teammates gave her a special nickname. So a lot of people call me the doctor now. That's a cool nickname. I mean, it is pretty cool. So if, if, if someone is around while you're fencing and they get hurt, you can you can jump down there and, and stitch them back up. Too. I mean, yeah, I could. In her second year of medical school, Thompson started training for the 2016 Olympics, but just missed qualified. This time around, she's taken a year off from medical school to focus on training. She's now working as a research fellow in orthopedic surgery at NYU as she pursues her dream of the Summer Games in Tokyo. Someone told me that you're number three in the, uh, in the country. Yep, a little birdie told you that. A little birdie told me you're number three. It's the, it's the highest I've ever been ranked. It's amazing. But what does it mean to be sitting here as a, uh, I wouldn't even say an Olympic hopeful, as an Olympic probable? I like that. It feels good. I told myself that we're going to put everything out there. We're going to train as much as possible. We're going to do all the things that are um, necessary for you to be on the Olympic team, and we'll see how it goes. Thompson trains six hours a day, six days a week in New York, where I met her to test my beginner skills. First things first, you get an unguard position. Pick it up, step out a little bit, and then bring your back leg. Yep. And less down leg. So I'm going to give you a footwork combination. Yep. Now you go to the workers like this. All right. Oh, how, how should it fit? So block. Exactly. that look like us in fencing. There are not, but it's growing. I think any sport that costs money is hard. But uh, what I found through just my journey is when you're really serious and passionate about something, doors will open up and you'll find ways to get the resources that you need. Kids who are watching your story, what do you want them to take away from, from what you've done so far? So I want kids to try new things, you know. Don't stick to what everyone else is doing. Try to do something different because the places that you can go, I've been in 22 different countries, most of which I would have never gone to on my own accord, you know. So I feel like when you step outside your comfort zone or your box, you have so many more opportunities. So just try something new. All right, guys. Wasn't that an amazing clip? I mean, wasn't that inspiring to see someone that could excel in athletics and also excel in a classroom? I mean, what great intelligence, what great strength this young lady has. It's gonna be uh, awesome to watch her uh, in the Olympics and fencing. So keep your eye out for it. This is a story that we can watch unfold all together. But again, I, I enjoyed this story and I, I was inspired uh, by watching her and seeing that one thing that motivated her was that, hey, I can do something athletically as a secondary consequence to my intelligence. And so she said in seeing that I can get a scholarship uh, for school, um, I'm going to take this on. Now, her school uh, went to the next level. This was not uh, just 
obtaining um, a degree, she wanted to become or is becoming a doctor. And we know how much schooling doctors have to go through. And in this certain time, we understand how important of a role that doctors play. I mean, we already understood that role, but we know now that that is a very important role. And now she's gonna even have the nickname, a nickname called The Doctor while she's fencing. This was just an incredible story. I think it works perfectly for our Women's Month. I hope you're inspired by that story. And as we continue to discuss Women's History Month, um, again, one of the people or key figures that I'm keying in on this month is Mary. And again, last week's message was titled, More Than a Mother. And now keeping in context with that more than a mother theme, um, we want to unravel another strength of Mary's. Last week, we discussed the strength that was called trust. This is not just a motherly instinct or a motherly characteristic, but it's also a, a characteristic of a great friend and also of a great leader. Great leaders have the trust of their constituents and a great friend has the trust of their friend. They don't betray that trust. They hold things uh, tight uh, and close-knit in that friendship. And so now this week, what I want to key in on is the intelligence and the knowledge of Mary. This is a strength, a strength not only of a person um, like Mary, but also of a leader, also of an individual. Mary also encompasses another strength, and that's praise. Uh, the ability to humble yourself, or if you praise someone, you do have to have the ability to humble yourself. And so we find in scripture and passages that Mary encompasses both of these qualities and both of these characteristics, which are extraordinary characteristics. And so now while the Bible doesn't really go into great detail about who Mary is as a person, um, the benefit in this message and in this series is really getting to know Mary more than just uh, the mother of Jesus. She plays an integral role in Jesus's life, but she can give women, she can give us all certain characteristics that we can use and grow from. And so one of those characteristics, again, I reiterate is intelligence or knowledge and the ability to, to praise. So again, when we talk about intelligence and we talk about knowledge, this is not just being the most brilliant person in the classroom, although those things do come to fruition when you are intelligent. But we are talking about being able to take the time, to set aside time, to learn more than you know, to go deeper into things that you are uncertain of, or to grow in uh, certain areas of life that you perhaps don't have the greatest of knowledge in. And so when we talk about Mary in this sense, and we discussed a little bit uh, on week one about how Jewish girls during this time period would take the time to go and learn uh, of the Torah or the first five books of the Bible. This was something that Mary would also do. And this is something that would also pay off for her uh, as she grew older and as she got ready to give birth to Christ. And so this is a, a thing that we can use in our lives to be able to go and know the word better because it will prepare us for things later on in life or even things like what we may be dealing with today. You know, we might be dealing with some areas of loneliness. We might be dealing with some areas of boredom. We may be dealing with some areas of uh, self-doubt. Uh, we might be fatigued. We might be worried or anxious. We may be prayerful for other people because we are fearful uh, for them and what they may be going through, like our, our first responders uh, and uh, people uh, that are essential employees. Uh, and so we grow anxious about those people and we pray for those people. But when we start to learn the things of God, it allows us to grow in a knowledge base and gives us a certain comfort level 
with things that will happen in our lives or things that are actually happening in our lives. And so this is a absolute strength that Mary has. And so when we talk about Mary, uh, and I say this is a strength that she has, um, I say this in, in knowing that in passage, she exhibits some things um, that we kind of overlook a bit. And so one of the passages that I want to discuss as we discuss about the intellect of Mary, and we also discuss uh, the praise of Mary. And so this passage that we'll find is going to be in Luke 1, verses 48, sorry, verses 46 through 55. That's Luke 1, verses 46 through 55. And again, this is a song of Mary. Mary sings this song after finding out that she is going to give birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, also called the Son of Man. So many names that we can give Jesus Christ. But after she finds this, she sings this song, and it is called Mary's Song of Praise. And it goes, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful for of the humble state of his service. From now on, all, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. His holy name, for his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. For he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry in good things. He has been sent, uh, sorry, but he has sent rich away empty. He has helped his servant of Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Now, this song of praise, or Mary's song of praise, is first a song to God. She is praising God. She is saying how great God is, how good God is. And because God is good, she also calls herself blessed. Now, she doesn't just call herself blessed out of any reason. She calls herself blessed because remember last week, the angel came to her and told her that she is blessed. And so now that she knows knowledge, knows that she is blessed, she is now reiterating that in her song of praise. What things do you know about yourself that you can give God praise for? Is it because you're intelligent? Is it because you're good looking? Is it because you're athletic? Is it because you're humble? Is it because you're kind? Is it because you're a good friend, a good son, a daughter, a uncle, a niece? What are those attributes that you can give praise for? This is such a valuable asset that Mary exhibits in this scripture. Now, when I say knowledge, I'm not just saying she knew she was blessed because someone told her she was blessed. Here's one thing that we gotta key in on on this scripture. Toward the end of the scripture, she says, he has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, as he promised our ancestors. Now, how does Mary know this? How does Mary reconcile that God is good based on this knowledge? Well, again, she knows the Torah. As a young child, she studied the book of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. She didn't have the, the advantage of going to Google and finding the answer. She didn't have the advantage of binging the answer. She couldn't ask Siri, hey Siri, what's the answer to this? Or to ask Alexa, hey Alexa, what's the answer to this? So she had to be learned in this area. She had to know these things and in knowing these things, she would show that she was intelligent. And so how do we know she knows this? Because it states in Genesis, 22 verse 16 and it says and I swear 
by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son and your son only, I surely will bless you and make you the descendants as numerous as the sky, as numerous as the stars in the sky. Again, I will bless you with the sun and make your blessing as numerous as stars in the sky. Mary has dated all the way back to Genesis, a promise that was given to her forefathers, right? And so we understand that Mary is learned, that Mary is intelligent because Mary is knowledgeable about the things of the Bible. She learned these things in her youth. She showed her intelligence in her youth. Now, the Bible states, uh, Paul writes in 1 Timothy, he states, study to show yourself approved to God. So again, this idea of studying, sometimes it seems bored and it seems like, I don't feel like doing it. This was something that Mary took on. This is what made her intelligence, and in fact, or intelligent. In fact, her in knowing the things of God and then knowing the things that were to come prepared her for what had came her way. The angel told her, do not be afraid. And she had no reason to be afraid because she could date back what God had promised generation to generation. Now, what surprised her that, that she was capable of being that person that would hold the son of God. But she was intelligent and she praised God in knowing all of this. Could you imagine? Mary could have just became very boastful. She could have been became very arrogant because she knew she was under the protection of God. She could have, you know, we could read about Mary being, you know, uh, uh, offsetting in the sense that she was very arrogant and telling people, get away from me. Don't you know I have the child of God and you can't touch me? Remember the old MC Hammer song? Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 can't touch this. Okay, y'all are too old for that. Or I'm too old, you guys are too young for that. But anyway, Mary did not carry herself out of arrogance. She carried herself out of very humble nature and she was able to do that based on the knowledge and the intellect that she had, that she had studied, that she had learned. And again, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved to God. So we know that we can take from Mary uh, to be approved by God is to also study his word, to know some of the most inner thinkings of God. And so we see and we know that this is not just something that we are imagining about Mary, not something that we're just postulating and trying to bring up because you know a lot about a person by what they say, how they say it. Someone can show who they are um, in conversation. And you can also show who you are in praise. You humble yourself when you give someone praise. When you look at mom and say, hey mom, man, you're great. That's praise. When you look at mom and you say, hey mom, man, you really work hard. That's praise. When you humble yourself, this is a great sign of a leader. Being able to say, know that you are great. Mary knew that she was blessed, but she didn't have to go around and tell everyone, I am blessed. But she was able to say and praise, I am blessed and I am thankful for this blessing. This intelligence allowed Mary to carry in her womb the Son of God. That gave her confidence. And even though she had confidence in knowing what would transpire, she still humbled herself and gave praise. When we watch and remember the video of the young lady, as young women, as ladies, as women, remember you can be a fencing champion at the same time as preparing to be a doctor. You can be a world-renowned uh, uh, opera singer while at the same time preparing uh, for uh, furthering your education. You can be a world-renowned track star and at the same time preparing 
uh, to be a great mother. You can be a great mother and at the same time preparing to become a firefighter. My point in saying this is that you are capable of being a mother and also being great. As a young lady, you are capable of being both a student and preparing to be something great. What is it in your life that you're asking God for you to prepare yourself for? You're asking God right now, my youth, my kids, my young girls, what are you asking God to empower you in? How can I be great? What can I be great in? Now the Bible says, study to show yourself approved because that one thing that you seek for, that one thing that you seeking out, God says, come to me first and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Now we know we have to go to him. And in going to him, we have to study to show ourselves approved. Have you given yourself to your time? I'm sorry. Have you given your time uh, to yourself with God? Studying his word. Have you given yourself to yourself? Studying your craft. What do you want to be? An astronaut, an engineer? Are you wanting to be a business owner? Are you wanting to be an inventor? What are these things that you want out of your life? And are you studying to show yourself approved? Mary is the perfect catalyst for us on this. Not only is she the mother of our Lord and Savior, she also exemplified the intelligence and knowledge in studying. We know this because she lamented about these things in her song of praise. And these things can be reiterated in earlier texts in the Bible. We know that Mary also was humble. And she was humble because she praised others. Have you taken the time to praise yourself? Because Mary praised herself. She said, I am blessed. Have you given yourself the acknowledgement that you need and said to yourself, I am and blessed. Yes, you are blessed. Acknowledge that in your prayer. And knowing that you are blessed, also realize where that blessing comes from. And in thanking God in that praise report, I thank God for all that he has done for me in my life. I thank God that I am blessed. I realize where my help comes from. This Sunday, if you're listening to this message, I want you to repeat after me. Dear God, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I accept you in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, you have just accepted Jesus Christ into your life. You've accepted Christ into your life, and this is the first step to studying to show yourself approved. I tell my youth all the time, don't just take my word for it. You have the Bible. Go in and read it for yourself. Get to know God better and more intimately yourself. Get to know God before he comes to visit you like Mary did. This Woman's Month, Mary exhibits another great quality. I hope it's a quality that you can use and you can grow from. I hope this message blesses you. I hope you enjoyed this message. I hope you continue to learn more about Mary throughout this series. God bless you and happy Sunday. Listen, the Bible declares in Romans 11. And from him him and for him are all things and to him be the glory forever.